Hi, ähm, ich war am Freitag in der Antigonisch und habe Schweinefutter geholt und habe auf dem Rückweg auf der Rampe, die hoch zur Autobahn geführt hat, lief ein Typ, ähm, lange Haare, Rucksack und ich habe angehalten und ihn gefragt, wohin er will. Und da meinte er, er will nach Cape Breton. Und dann habe ich ihn mitgenommen und wir haben uns super unterhalten im Auto. Und dann habe ich ähm, Bradley angeboten, das Wochenende mit uns zu verbringen. Und wir haben ein fantastisches Wochenende erlebt, mit fantastischen Gesprächen. Und ähm, wer dieser Typ ist und was er zu sagen hat und warum, das erfahrt ihr in unserem Clip. In diesem Clip jetzt gleich. Danke fürs Anschauen. Bis gleich. See ya. Now we continue in English because um, Bradley is speaking German very well, but uh, probably not good enough for an interview. <laughs> yeah, Bradley, I just, um, um, in that little intro, I just um, said how we met and that you, uh, uh, that we met basically on the highway up to Cape Breton. And you told me that um, two years ago you basically sold your company left your family in accordance with your wife and went on a two years, almost two years um, pilgrimage, you called it. Why, what caused you to go on the road without money? This guy is traveling without any money, um, but he's not begging people for money. He's just going wherever life takes him, wherever this pilgrimage takes him. And I would want to know, Bradley, what caused you to choose that path? Well, I really just saw things uh, differently. You know, I saw that I was attached to something that uh, is... Uh, it, not necessarily you know good like we, we we're born into a culture we're born into a world where so many things are wrong on so many different levels and uh you know i wanted to help i wanted to make it you know do better help people to you know, to be better and uh yeah ultimately I had a, a spiritual awakening, you know, I, I really, that's kind of what led me to calling and asking for help from a higher source, but that ultimately led to this journey that I've been on. Would you say this was a Christian awakening, a Buddhist awakening, or awakening that had its source in any spiritual, spiritual tradition? Well, yeah, I'm definitely not a follower of any religion, but uh, I see the, the, the same basic truth in all of them. You know, at the core of all of them is this concept of love your neighbor as yourself. And uh, so it's about these qualities of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, gratitude, generosity. It really is about becoming these qualities. The, the more of these qualities that we have and embody, the more, uh, you know, if we're not these qualities, then, then we're suffering. And in our suffering, we're just inflicting suffering on, on everyone and everything around us. How I see it, you know, the, the best thing I could do for the world is become the best version of myself possible. It really is to become Christ-like, it's to become, you know, like Buddha, like... And uh, if we're not this Christ-like being, you know, then again, you know, we're, we're suffering. And in our suffering, we're just, we're uh, leaving a, a wake of negative energy, to say the least. But, but uh, yeah, we, we've become very destructive. And, and we can do it. We can become a more peaceful version of ourselves. We can gain the wisdom 
to be virtuous. You know, if that's our priority, it is to gain that knowledge, that wisdom, that insight, perspective, then it will start becoming a reality. And we, we can start changing who we are. At, at the core of our being, we can start getting back to who and what we really are, what we're truly meant to be. You, t you told me, I mean, we had, uh, you're here now with us since Friday afternoon, we uh, and spending the whole weekend with us, and we had day and night literally fantastic uh, conversations about literally God and the world. And um, you told me that you traveled the whole of North America, basically, Canada, and especially also the US, now ending up in Nova Scotia for the time being. And you said that you stayed with rich people, not so rich people, regular middle class people, poor people and, and homeless. And you've seen a lot of things and been with a lot of people. And you said, you mentioned that the most generous, the most peaceful, the most, um, one of the most generous people you found among poor people and homeless you stayed with and you, that you met. Why would you say is that so? I think it's, uh, you know, we try to find fulfillment and meaning in uh, material stuff and possessions and money. And uh, when we accumulate the stuff, you know, the, the very stuff that promises our security becomes the source of our insecurity. You know, now I have to protect my stuff. I have to maintain a, a lifestyle. And then other people are, 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 are a potential threat to my stuff. It's uh, so that's why I think people who have more stuff, who are richer, are less likely to to be welcoming and inviting because they, uh, in a material sense, they have more to lose. So in other words, that I think Janis Joplin, famous Janis Joplin verse, freedom, freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose. <laughs> So in a way, you, what you experienced along your trip is people that literally have nothing left to lose are free and also free to share. Yeah, and if you can be content and grateful having less, that, that, uh, that, that really is true freedom. And you know, when we're, uh, if some material possession or, or, or thing is the source of my well-being, that then there's always going to be that carrot that I'm chasing to maintain my, my well-being. But it really is a state of mind, you know, we can be content and grateful in any situation regardless of what we have or don't have if, if we make that the priority. And uh, see, then the focus starts shifting from us to, to other beings and relationships and who we are. and it, and that's what I think poor people are at, They're, and not all, you know, you can't paint any group with one brush, but it really has been my experience that people who have very little are very generous with, with what they have or and more willing to, to share. Because you're right, I, I ran into all types of people, but the, the people who have been the most inviting and, and willing to have, help have really been people who were poor materially. It's a pretty, pretty impressive and in a way humbling experience, isn't it? Very. I mean, it's changed who I am. It's changed my perspective on the world. It's, it's, uh, it really gets you thinking what's, what's important and what's real in this world. And that's what the whole journey is really about, is about trying to help people to, to see what is real, to see what is important. You yeah, know? but um, I mean, no, no disrespect to, to what you're just saying, but I mean, you're on a spiritual journey. Um, you gave away, away all your material wealth and to your family, to your wife, and left without a dime and are living since without a dime. But still, you have to live and survive in this world and you experience, like you said, rain, snow, you were freezing, you were starving. Um, what were the most, um, uh, the toughest, what was the toughest experience so far on your two year long journey? <laughs> well, the, the biggest challenges now are, are always physical. 
it's never like spiritually, emotionally, you know, I've never been better. I've never been so calm and at peace in my life. And, and I, I really remained rooted and solid in that. I, I don't remember the last time I was angry, you know, it's been a couple of years. So materially, sometimes I'm great, like right now, the last, you know, two or three days I've been here and I've been, I've been great. When I leave here, I, I don't know what's waiting. I could very well, uh, you know, go on a drought of, you know, I, I don't know what's down the road. But but the biggest challenge I, I had was right at the start of, of winter, back in November. And I hadn't eaten really, well, I'd eaten very little in, in, in a couple days. And then I went on three days where I didn't have anything at all. And it was right at the time where the weather was changing and it got cold. And uh, it was too cold to just sit. I couldn't just sit and I had to keep moving to, to keep warm. And uh, I hadn't eaten for a few days, so my, you know, my energy was kind of Decreasing. dropping low. Yeah. So it was, it was really, uh, it, it was a huge test of faith. It really was. It, there was no good options, but uh, I clung on to the only thing that I do have. You know, I really do believe I'm, I'm being led, guided, and looked after, and everything has a purpose. And that challenge had, had a purpose, you know, it really is to increase my faith and my trust, and, you know, it definitely did. And in the end, that's what happened. I mean, you didn't, you didn't, you were starving, that was a tough period, but then life went on. I mean, You seem al you seem pretty alive. <laughs> it's it's like you find an oasis after going through that desert, and then yeah, everything else just I mean. But uh, for the most part, I haven't been lacking, really. Uh, you know, in regards to food and water and stuff. That, that, I mean, there's definitely been times where where I have, but for the most part, you know, it, it there's always an abundance. There really is an abundance everywhere. And I don't go around asking and begging. Like people just, you know, I just have these connections with people. That, I mean, it's amazing. It's re remarkable how the universe kind of aligns to, to make a way through the impossible. I mean, we have we are in close contact with um, our friends and relatives in Germany, many of which really are afraid to lose their jobs. Many are the f afraid that I not that they are not able to to pay the rent anymore. And if you have children, if you have a mortgage to pay, <clears throat> if you have, yeah, that is a frightening thought. And in fact, many probably will lose their jobs. Many will face hardships, really hardships, and they are fucking afraid of that. And I do understand this, and you surely do too. Yet. What, as a guy who is now on a journey for two years, obviously hard times, but obviously successfully, and 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 you, you not only still live, you say you're better in a way than than you ever were. What would you, without preaching, and without um, speaking, I don't know, a, abstract crap, if you permit me saying this, what would you? What would your, what would you tell these people who are now in the midst of this COVID Corona crisis are afraid of losing it all? What would you, drawn from your experience of the last two years, what would you tell them? Yeah, the, the more we try to find meaning and fulfillment in, uh, you know, you know the material things and and the stuff and the status and the money. The the more our identities are, are really rooted in these things, you, you know, and, and to lose them is to lose the very fabric of who we are. But, but here's the thing, everybody who has ever lived has lost 100% of, of everything they had. At some point, we're all going to lose everything, all of us. It doesn't matter how much you love it, how rich you are, you, you are going to grow old, you're going to die, all of this is going to be stripped from you. And we all have to come to terms with this in our own way. And, uh, you know, it really gets you thinking, you know, who, who, what are we? What, why are we here? What's the purpose of all this? 
and, but I, I really think get into a mindset of being willing to, to lose it all, you know, to be comfortable in any situation is uh, the only way to be truly free. To, to be, if you can be content and grateful with absolutely nothing, well, then, then you're truly rich beyond, you know, nothing, nothing needs to be added to you. We all have that ability, but we all, to some degree, hinge our well-being on, you know, our current status. And I mean, if I understood you right, um, it's a good way to put it. Someday, every one of us will lose it all. And we might, many of us might lose a lot now. So why not start now embracing that thought and trying to pull something positive out of it. If not, a positive attitude at least, you know, towards happening, what's happening now. Because even in a time like this, even for my personal situations, there are not only risks and threats, but there are maybe even chances, you know, chances for a, yeah, for a new start, whatever that might be, don't you think? Absolutely. If, uh, if all my investments go into protecting myself, you know, my stuff, my bank account, my, it's, uh, it's kind of at the, ex at the expense of everyone and, and everything around me in a sense. Like the more I invest in everyone around me to, to build up everyone around me, I mean, that's in my best interest. It's in my best interest to have everyone around me in the best possible state of mind, the best possible state of, of well-being, materially, emotionally, you know. It really is in all our best interest to lift up everyone around us. That was one very interesting aspect that came up during our conversations that, I mean, we all think only money being the currency or a currency. Um, but um, we discussed that on a very concrete very concrete level in the information age that we live in, also visibility, being seen and heard from my customers, for instance, um, from my suppliers, from the public that I cater to as a self-employed, being seen and heard is a very concrete currency. And so why should not be sharing and opening up and sharing what you have and with others? And you would say love, sending out love, why shouldn't be that a currency too? Um, or, um, also, if we might, might fi find with our everyday conscience, find it difficult to understand that. But I mean, in a way, one could see it like that. Open up, share, and be open for what comes back then. Yeah. This is really like an echo chamber, this whole world, you know, whatever we're sending out is, is rebounding back to us. And uh, the question is, you know, what am I sending out? You know, I don't want to be a being that inflicts suffering on any other being. Because if I do, you know, that's, that's coming back to me on, on some level. It really, that's what it's, uh, you know, that's why I said, like, Jesus isn't a man from 2,000 years ago. You know, he's the version of you that isn't sending out any negative energy. He's the version of me that is in harmony with, with, with everything, you know, around me. And uh, if we're not these versions of ourself, we're, we're just inflicting. We're, we're, we're not helping. We're not investing in, in, in things around us. We're not building up. We're, we're tearing down. Well, I... I um I thank you for um doing this uh, not so short 18 minutes conversation uh, um I just want you guys to remember that um this guy wasn't begging in the streets of Antigonish this guy wasn't even asking me for a lift I stopped and had him in and um we spent two Two and a half fantastic days here, um, very inspiring conversations. Cause basically, in a little in a little way, having met Bradley stands for what 
Ute and I want to do here um, in Canada, which is the reason why I put this conversation on our YouTube channel, which is our Canadian diary. We want, with Burns Lodge, we want to create a place where that is essentially open for everyone, where we could share the beauty that we have here and the assets, if you will, material assets even that we have here, and where meaningful encounters and meaningful um, conversations with people from all kinds of life shall be possible in the future. And so this is why it was a privilege to meet you. Likewise, yeah, I really appreciate everything. We really spent two and a half great and very meaningful days, inspiring days together. And I wish you for your ongoing um, pilgrimage, like you call it, um, I wish you all the best, every luck. Um, maybe we can stay in touch. In a way, we will always stay in touch. <laughs> and um, if whatever happens or you feel like it, you're more than welcome to show up here anytime. You will be always welcome. But I, yeah, this has been amazing. It really, I, yeah, thank you for everything. It really has been amazing. Very uh, grateful how things work out. And uh, yeah, it's really amazing. It really is. And for you guys, it's uh, Monday, quarter to ten, local time, and pretty much after we are finished with this little conversation, I will drive Bradley down to Highway Trans Canada Highway 4 leading up to Sydney because he will continue his journey now. All the best to you, and great to meet you, Bradley. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it.